Hey, everyone. You know, if you ask someone in, that's in their 40s or 50s when they plan to retire, the answer you hear most often is 65. There's just something about the age of 65 that's synonymous with retirement, most likely because that was the full retirement age for Social Security for the first few decades of the program. And most pension plans still use 65 as the starting point for when they can calculate payments. And this is the age when you're first eligible for Medicare. But once someone turns 60, things start to change. That's when they start to narrow down the time frame and age range they'd like to retire. It seems that more and more often I'm starting to hear people say they'd like to keep working. In many cases, their health is better than they thought it would be, and they still have lots of energy, and they feel like they're making a meaningful contribution with their decades of knowledge, and they are. So more and more often now, I'm starting to hear retirees say that it's going to be 67, 68, 70, or they say they never plan to quit working. But then we have some 60-year-olds who are looking at the balances of their retirement accounts, and they have more saved than they ever thought they would. And so retiring earlier than 65 is now possible. But whether someone wants to retire early or later, they often have the same question. How will this affect my Social Security benefit? So today, I'm going to dive into this and show you step-by-step step how to figure this out for yourself so you're not left wondering or just relying on the Social Security statement. And speaking of your statement, that will give you a good idea, but just know that it does make certain assumptions about your future earnings that may or may not be correct. And for this reason, I think it's a really good idea for you to know how to do this for yourself. Real quick before we jump in, I want to tell you about my brand new online workshop that I just released. This is the new version of the How to Choose the Right Time to File for Social Security. In this workshop, I'll help simplify the rules so you can use them to your advantage and get every dollar in benefits that you deserve. I cover the nine factors to consider before you file for benefits and how to coordinate your Social Security filing decision with your other assets and income for a tax-efficient distribution strategy. One thing is for sure, there's no such thing as a one-size-fits-all filing strategy. And before you get too far down the road of planning your filing decision, you need to carve out an hour of your time and watch this workshop. There's absolutely no charge for it, and I'm going to put a link down below where you can join us in the next session. So before we jump into helping you to figure out how early or late retirement will affect your Social Security benefit, you need to get something first. You need to get a copy of your earnings record. Just go over to your My SSA account, and once you're logged in, just scroll about midway down, and you'll see the link that'll give you your complete earnings history. The earnings we'll be using for this are your taxed Social Security earnings because they only consider the earnings up to the maximum taxable cap, whereas the taxed Medicare earnings will show earnings over the cap, and those don't count for calculating a benefit. So just ignore the taxed Medicare earnings column. Once you have this, you're going to go through a three-step process to calculate your benefit. Now, you may need to pause or rewind this video to get all of these steps, but I promise you, once you understand it, it will be easy. No more mystery. Those three steps are calculate your averaged index monthly earnings. That's generally known by its acronym AIM, and that's how I'll refer to it in the rest of this video as well. Step two, you apply that AIM to the correct benefits formula. And then step three is to reduce or increase that benefit based on your filing gauge. So let's jump right in to calculating your AIM. The first thing you have to know is that your earnings from that earnings record are not used at face value. Earnings are indexed to account for inflation through your age 59. And then all earnings at 60 and up are used at face value. So the first thing you'll need to do is index your earnings. Don't worry, this part is easy, but it does have a few pieces to it. First, you need to get your indexing factors. Now, these change depending on your year of birth. So you'll need to go to the Social Security Administration's website, and I'll link up the specific site in the description. And in the bottom where it says year of eligibility, you need to put in the year you turned 62. Even if that's a few years ago, this is asking about the year that you were first eligible, and it has nothing to do with the year you file for benefits. Once you hit submit, you'll see your indexing factors listed here year by year. And all you need to do here is multiply your actual earnings from the taxed Social Security earnings column by the number shown in the indexing factors for that year. For example, if your 1970 earnings were $8,500, you'd multiply that by 8.9923120 for indexed earnings of $76,434. Now, 
And you do that for every year you have earnings. Now, keep in mind, earnings at 60 or later are not indexed. And I'm not going to get into the weeds of the way they round these numbers and running it through this whole formula. This, what we're covering today, will get you close enough. Then the second part of calculating your aim is to look at your list of indexed earnings and add up the highest 35 years. The other years don't count. Once you have this summed up, you simply divide by 420 because that's the number of months in 35 years. And the result is your averaged index monthly earnings. Now, this list of high 35 years becomes important if you continue working. It's likely that your earnings are at their peak. And if a year of earnings is higher than the lowest year on your list of high 35, it'll replace that year and thus increase your average index monthly earnings. So now that you've calculated your average index monthly earnings, your aim, it's time to run it through the formula. Now, this part is important. The formula that's used is the formula in place the year you turn 62 when we're dealing with retirement benefits. I'm going to put another link in the description that shows all the prior formulas if you turn 62 in a prior year. And if you'll turn 62 in a future year, I just suggest taking today's formula, which you'll see that in the link, and increasing those numbers by 4% per year up to the year you turn 62. So let's run through an example of how this formula works. There are three bands that your aim is applied to. The dollar amounts of these bands generally change every year, but the multipliers do not change. Aim in the first band is multiplied by 90%. Aim in the second band is multiplied by 32%. And aim in the last band is multiplied by 15%. The result of this calculation is your primary insurance amount, which is typically called your PIA. This is just your benefit amount at full retirement age. So let's walk through a quick calculation so you can see how this flows. Let's assume that your aim was $7,000. So the first 1,024 of that is multiplied by 90%, which is $921. And then the amount between 1,024 and 6,172 is multiplied by 32%. So that adds another 1,647 to your PIA. And then the amount that's over 6,172 is multiplied by 15%, and that adds $124 to your PIA. And when you add this column up, it gives you a PIA of $2,692. After that, all that's left is to reduce or increase based on age. And since this is all keyed off of your full retirement age, let's take a quick review so we can be certain that you're using the right age. For anyone born between 1943 and 1954, the full retirement age is 66. For every year after 1954, the full retirement age increases by two months all the way until 1960, where it's currently set at 67. So now that you're positive of what your exact full retirement age is, you can now reduce or increase your PIA based on your filing age. And since your full retirement ages vary, I thought the easiest way to cover this would be to look at the increases or reductions on a monthly basis. If you're still sticking with me, doing this on a monthly basis probably won't be an issue for you. So we know that 62 is the earliest age you can file, and 70 is the latest age that you should ever file. So let's assume this red line here is your full retirement age. Anything before that and your PIA gets reduced. After that and your PIA is increased. And let's take the increases first. For every month after full retirement age, up to age 70, your benefit is increased by 0.667% for every month you delay. Before full retirement age, it gets a little more complicated because there are actually two time periods there. You have the 36-month period that's immediately prior to your full retirement age, and then you have a period that is months greater than 36. In the first segment, the 36-month period right before your full retirement age, your PIA is reduced by 0.556% per month you file early. And then any months greater than 36 are reduced by 0.417% per month. Now, I know this may seem like a slightly more complicated way to calculate monthly reductions or increases, but I rarely find anyone who files in exact 12-month increments from their full retirement age. So doing this on a monthly basis really makes it easier. So that's the benefit calculation in a nutshell. Once you go through this a time or two, you'll be a pro and know exactly how retiring early or retiring later will affect your benefit amount.
So I hope this helps you. And don't forget to check out my online workshop where I'll cover the nine factors that everyone needs to consider before they file for Social Security. I'll see you there.